Hey, hey, it's TDA and welcome to episode 10 of this super proliferation run. And today we are basking in the sun while we are enjoying one of the few moments on this planet where it's actually daylight. And we are going to be covering one of the things that people have been asking me about for the last week or so. And that is how are you dealing with all the power increase requirements because of all the proliferation? Um, the answer is simple, partially with the fact that by proliferating with extra products you actually save a little bit on power here and there as well it's not a net saving don't get me wrong you're still spending more energy to produce the same stuff um because of course we are produ producing it more efficiently but it's still a net increasing power well partially i because i am trying to keep the amount of stuff i built under control i don't try to overproduce too many items and the second is the fact that i simply have a lot of powers um or solar panels i should say on this planet um as you can see power is still is quite a bit of a problem on this planet because even though we're blessed with a planet that has 113 percent solar energy um and we actually have reddington which is even better it has 134 the angle of the sun compared to this planet which is also the reason why it's day uh, or sorry nights most of the time it's a little awkward so it's really uh, going up and down the energy production on this planet even though we have rings because the poles are sometimes completely in darkness um, as you can see now we're hovering at around 50 percent energy this is about as low as it gets so apparently i picked the wrong moment to show you my power production um, it actually goes up to somewhere around 400 and we are currently producing a lot of items so this is also why we're currently asking a lot of our planet's energy production but still uh, we need a lot more power on this planet, especially if we plan on producing even more on this one. Well, there's a few ways we can solve that. Um, we've basically made our mall on the starting planet obsolete. Now we are actually producing everything and actually a little bit more in our mall on our super mall here. The mall of everything that we have on this planet. Um, but we um, are lacking a few more things. So one important thing that we now have are ge geothermal power stations. And we will be using this in this episode to make use of our lava planet. We will also be making use of the energy exchangers that we are currently also making. Because we have made all the required materials for that. And they are being transported to our mall as well. But there is one item that we are lacking in this. And I think it's over here. Yep. Uh, it's the accumulator. We are currently not making accumulators. Why not? Well, we have iron. We have super magnetic rings but we don't have the crystal silicon so let's find a place where we can make that and let's get to that well we have a little bit of room in the upper quadrant next to our mall and we might as well use it because this is going to be an extremely straightforward build so we are going to put in an ILS we are going to put in a belt of exports and then we're going to smelt why are we going to smelt well this crystal silicon is very straightforward it is made from Normal silicon and normal silicon is of course made from silicon ore. So all we need to do is put down a couple of smelters. And of course we are going to be proliferating all this stuff because, well, that's what we do over here. And we are going to need exactly 12 smelters for silicon. I want a build that is producing about 10 per second. Um, we are really not going to need much more than that. So there's no need to make this build any bigger than that. And we can simply do that something like this. Now you know how I hate these T combiners, uh, the way it looks. So I'm gonna put a splitter in there just to make it a little bit more neat. You don't need to do that, but hey, why wouldn't you? It's not like splitters are expensive. Now this is going to produce the silicon. And oh, 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 oh. let's make sure it's in the correct space. I'm sorry about all the blinking lights, by the way. Let me turn those off. There we go. And uh, another row of those, of course. And then we are going to have to produce some silicon crystal. Not before we proliferate that, however. Let's not forget about that. There we go. It wouldn't be the first time I actually do forget about that. And we are going to need 16 of those. So I like to make things a little bit symmetric. As you know by now, I guess. And because this is such a simple build, what we can actually do is wrap this around and have this go all the way back like this and then back into our build 
And what we're also going to need to do is proliferate this. So let's make sure we do that. And I am actually going to switch up these belts because I think it's going to be a little bit more neat if we do it like this. Now, we are going to have to import silicon. We are going to export silicon crystal, but we also need some warpers and we are going to need some of those. And I actually prefer doing it like this to always have these two at the bottom. So that at some point you actually get used to the fact like, oh yeah, those are those go on the bottom. And if I don't have those over there, something is wrong. And we can also set these to demand already. Apparently we're not supplying them anywhere in the system just let yet. Uh, I think we are, but we can fix that while we are at Reddington, because that's where we're going next. And of course, we need some proliferation going on. Here we go. And since we have an outer belt on the other side as well, we might as well do it like this. And that takes care of that. Now, I'm just going to quickly finish this build, and then we'll be back. Alrighty, there we go. As you can see, we have the build up and running now. It is... Pretty much working like intended. We might have one or two of the um, smelters over here zoning in and out because of the simple reason we should technically have a little bit more than 12 in here, but I don't like off numbers and I don't want to be overproducing anyway. And considering the material that we're talking about, it's okay if this produces just slightly under 10% per second um, looking at the output of this build let's double check if it's working like intended we have 100 in here it's actually being exported as well so that should hopefully mean that if we check our mall let's do that and remember you can access your ios from anywhere on the planet where are the um, accumulators yes look we have already 10 accumulators waiting for us and of course we will be producing more while we're making the next few builds or getting up power up and running in order to do so i'm bringing 100 geothermal power stations to the lava planet that we have and let's see what we can do with that and there we go we are now on reddington and reddington is a lava planet and it is really awesome because lava planets don't have the all all the uh, day and night issues that we have on our other planet and quite frankly just look at it it just looks so much cooler than the boring planet we have uh, in the rest of our systems anyway um, i digress because there is a reason that we haven't made this our main production planet and that's because lava gets in the way especially if you make a larger build and we have quite a lot of lava on this planet and i saved all of that lava with the exception of a very few tiny pieces um, I saved all that lava because we want to kind of see how much power we can draw from that. Now, if you are not familiar yet with geothermal power plants, let me briefly explain how they work. If you look at the um, tooltip, it says 2.4 megawatts per power plant, which is quite decent. If you compare that to the thermal power plant that you actually also need to supply with materials, it's only 2.16. So it's a better version, basically of a thermal power plant and you don't need to put anything in however you do need to put it on lava so you can only use it on planets that actually have lava which of course there are not many of now the upside is and i think that's by intent of the developers you can pretty much place them on whatever little piece of lava you have but but you do need to take into account the percentage that it shows you when you're trying to place them down so now for example if i place it down here it will function at 81%. So you won't actually get that full power production that is chosen in the tooltip. You will get 81% of it. Now, on the other hand, if I place it in the middle of lava, so with lava all around, you can see the percentage goes up. I'm not actually sure how high you can get it. Pretty high, probably. As you can see, 125. So this is actually a very good place to place it. And then the real question becomes... Um, where do I put it in such a way that I optimize the total production? Because there is a limit to how close you can put them together. As you can see here, um, and now I have two on the side. And yeah, the, the total percentage is probably higher than when I would simply place one in the middle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to consider this a little bit of a challenge. Let's note at the moment how much power production we have. It's not that much on this planet yet. I just put down a couple of um, solar panels. So right now we're at around 166. Now remember this is solar panels. Uh, so depending on where the sun hits, 
um, we might not be getting the full power. I don't actually think we have that many solar panels on here though, so I think this is pretty much close to how high it can get. So 168 and all the power panels are working, solar panels are working. We also do have some solar panels, uh, sorry, turbines, wind turbines on this planet as well. So I do want to remove them just because they look so ugly. But let's see how much power we can produce with just lava power. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to remove all the solar panels from this planet. Then I'm going to remove all the wind turbines from this planet. And then I'm only going to put in lava power stations or geothermal power stations as they are formerly called. Let's see how high we can get it and kind of fiddle around with how we place them in the lava pools, etc, etc. And I will meet you back here once I'm done with that. Okay, so remember when I flew to the planet with 100 geothermal power plants. I was like, yeah, that should be way more than enough. Well, not really. I ended up placing 510. Yeah, I counted all of them. 510 geothermal power plants all over this planet and it took me way longer than i thought so be warned if you want all this free power you're gonna have to work for it because you have to place them one by one and if you have a lava type of planet with all these snaky little kind of flows of lava that's gonna take you a while so a few things while i was building these 510 geothermal power plants um, a few things. So I noticed that the highest I actually ever got the percentage was 128. Now I have a feeling you can probably get it higher than that. Um, but that was the maximum I had on this planet. So 128% efficiency. The orientation actually does matter. So um, the orientation doesn't matter in terms of how much power you get per node. That seems to be fixed. It's just about how much lava is around that spot. And to be honest, it also seems to be relying on how deep the lava is. So where you have different levels of water on your starting planet, some of it's steep, some of it is shallow. There's an achievement that requires you to dive like into deep water and that won't work just anywhere. So there's depth in terms of how deep the lava is as well. Um, that seems to matter for the power. So sometimes there were little spaces where there wasn't that much lava around, but where I could easily reach 100% or more. And sometimes in the uh, larger areas, it seemed, well, not hard to get 100% because relatively speaking, it was easier. Um, but when you have little islands like this, that can mess up your power. So it's not always obvious what is the best place to place your power station. Generally speaking, I did find that you want to keep them as close as possible for the most part. But especially when you have like these um, types of the rivers where you can place them on opposite sides of it, it's typically best to just put it in the middle. And then um, the difference between something like 70% and 100%, even if it's just one or two nodes further away, uh, can really add up in terms of making sure you optimize the amount of power on your um, lava generation. Uh, anything else I need to mention about this? No, not really, other than the fact that we need to check how much power we are actually getting from this. And, spoiler alert, it is actually quite a lot. Um, I haven't checked the final amount, actually. So we have, there we go, 824 megawatts of stable free power. And considering the uh, solar domes on our other planets are generating like four or 500, and that's with quite a lot of solar panels going around um i'd say 824 without using the domes for any types of power so this is just the lava um i'd say this is pretty good so now now we have all this power what are we going to do with it well of course we are going to charge some accumulators because actually on this planet as you can see we barely need the power so we might as well put it to use so let's go find a good space to make that build all right, so we have all this power now. What are we going to do with it? Well, first of all, we are going to be re requesting um, accumulators from the other planet, and they are under the building, so I always keep losing them. But we are going to demand these pretty much all we can get. These are the empty ones that we want to charge, and this is a 
pretty good place to do so. And we are going to be exporting the full accumulators. So let's make sure we set that. Let's make sure we are actually able to get them in from over here as well. And generally speaking, I suggest you keep the load of the vessels a little bit lower because this is a relatively low um, demand item. Well, not a low demand item, but it's quite a lot of power per um, unit. So let's make sure we are actually shipping them off at a regular interval rather than waiting until we have a few hundred of them before we do so. Um, yeah, that is that for that. Let's make sure we actually... Um, are stacking up the warpers as well now i'm actually not entirely sure if we need to proliferate these items i haven't tested that just yet so for science let's just make sure we are proliferating these as well so let's demand some of that and then uh, let's have a belt go down the middle over here and let's make sure we fit one of these things on it um uh, let's make sure we keep that a bit efficient. Let's put it like there so it doesn't clip. And power it up. We should probably place the power pole over there. If that's, yeah, there we go. And then let's make sure we have the proliferators going out. Like this. And then, ooh, that's one too far. Yep. And let's make sure we have this proliferated. Okay, so... We are going to need some of these energy exchangers because this is the way we can charge up our stuff. And I'm going to place 18 of these. And why 18? And well, it's two reasons. A, it's 9 by 9. So, or not 9 by 9, it's a uh, 3 by 3 times 2. It's a nice little formation we have over here. And we can make that work pretty nicely by doing it something this and uh, yeah that should work and that uh, we can do something like this um, yeah let's make let's place a few more of these no 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 wow not there always happens to me these things never cooperate with me the energy exchanges are so big as you can see <laughs> they kind of get in the way of the build okay anyway uh we don't necessarily need to do it like this but yeah we do actually need to do it like this because of the bells like that okay and same thing on the other side of course and you could probably also copy paste this but hey the fun and that we might as well just make it manual there we go okay and then we have a whole bunch of accumulators going in like this and yes yes i know you're big get out of the way i need to connect belts sure now we also get the auto safe why not why not why not just my luck and as you can see this can be a bit a bit tedious to do but uh, I guess you get the point. And uh, let me skip ahead while I finish the last of these belts. Alrighty, and there we go. All the belts are done. We now have 18 exchangers fully ready to be charging up our accumulators. That is exactly enough to charge 810 megawatts worth of surplus of power, which is almost exactly what we have on this planet. We will probably have a little more than that after I might just place back a few of the solar panels but we'll have to see um for now this will be more than enough and 810 megawatts to, that we can pretty much just place on whatever planet that we want that's pretty nice um let's make sure we actually put them on the belt we have a few thousand i think by now yeah one and a half k worth of empty ones so that is pretty nice it took me quite a while to place all these geothermal power plants so in the meanwhile our um, silicon crystal production was doing its job as you can see they are being supplied across the entire build and um, yeah at some point this will of course um, be enough but currently we are not actually charging anything why not because i didn't want to take away from you the best animation in the game let's pick a strategic position to do that let's put it to charge and then just see 
them opening up one by one. Doesn't that just look awesome? I think it does. Oh, I can't reach that one. That's a shame. There we go. And now we have 18 of these 2 times 9 be charging up. And if in case you were wondering how this works, well, it's actually pretty simple. We are putting them in on the one end and we are exporting them on the other hand. And as you can see, the um, empty ones are being input over here. And then the um, charged ones will be going through the charging one. So as you can see, for example, over here, uh, there will be one popping out soon. And it should go right through on the other end. So the charged ones go through. And because they were in idle mode there for a moment, you will see that, for example, over here, we have a few charged ones that are currently stuck on this belt because they're uncharged ones going in as well. But at the same time, you can also see this accepting uncharged ones. So at some point, that belt will go completely through. Um, as you can see oh, over here, we actually don't have this set to charging yet. My bad, I was wondering why all the uncharged ones were coming through. And as you can see now, we fixed that issue and the charged ones from this one are already going all the way through. So, um, problem solved pretty much. We uh, should have a decent amount of charged ones already. As you can see, we have 181 already in here. Um, set to supply. We are currently only demanding them in our um, mall where we are going to be using these towards producing solar that's not solar, sorry, orbital collectors, which is one of the few uses that these things have other than charging your planets. So, um, however, we're not completely done just yet because this is of course charging, which is really nice and cool and all, but we also need a build to discharge these things. And that build will look slightly different from this one. So let's warp back to our very ugly main production planet and let's set up our discharging facility over there. Alrighty, we are back on our production planet and I took the liberty of already putting down the build and as you can see it is one of the builds that you might be familiar with from one of my previous runs. It's quite straightforward, although, well, actually it's not that straightforward, so let me walk you through it. It's a smaller build than what we did on the um, charging builds because there's only six discharging units in here. The reason for that is quite simple. You might not want to discharge everything on the same planet, so... I scaled this down a little bit so that you can spread it across at least three planets if you want to. Um, you do need to be a little bit careful about how you set the demand on these things. You shouldn't set it too high, otherwise if you put it at 10,000 you might get into a situation where all your materials or your charge ones are going to one facility and none of them are going to another one. So once again, make sure you set it low enough, especially if you have lower amounts of charge ones in your system. At some point it won't matter. but that of course does depend on how much you're actually charging and discharging and at which ratio you are doing so. Um, the way I typically try to do it, if I build, in my case, 18 charging facilities, then I know that I should be at most discharging 18 as well. Um, that is of course assuming that we can actually keep up the charging and discharging at the same rate. Well, discharging is not a problem, but we need to make sure we are actually charging 18 all the time because otherwise you could get into power trouble anyway um why are there charging units in my build well the reason for that is quite simple and that is how the power priority works these things will always be discharging at max capacity that means that basically you are wasting a ton of energy from accumulators if you also have things like solar panels or wind turbines on your planet because they will be discharging whether you need it or not. As you can see right now, we barely have any demand on the planet. All our production, because we were away for so long, has stagnated because we're not actually consuming anything. Um, so actually our solar panels are more than enough currently to supply all the energy, yet these things are still discharging. Why are they still discharging? Well, that's just because how that works. However, if we also put in charging units, and charging units only work when you have surplus power, we can make sure that at all times we make uh, make use of all the surplus energy going to waste otherwise. Now, by doing so, we have a, a nice little build. Um, other than the fact that it's really efficient and you don't waste any energy from your accumulators if you don't have to. 
Um, there's actually a second belt going through the middle as well because at some point you might be charging them at a lower speed than you can than you are discharging, which hopefully is the case at the moment you actually need these things. Um, this belt could get completely stuck and then the other ones can get in because the other ones can get out. So this sorter is actually supposed to um, at first put as many as it can into the charging facility, but if for some reason this gets stuck, because you are just you can not charge them fast enough um, the surplus will the empty ones will be going on this middle belt all the way through here so the priority is set for this but the if this gets stuck the extra ones will be going back into the ILS empty so they can be picked up again to be charged so that means that your system here should not get stuck unless you have a dramatic power issue so um, I built three times this belt so we have 18 of these supplying and the reason i make it small and tidy is because then you can use it around the poles which you know i like to do and the other reason it looks really cool i think uh, you could in theory make an entire ring of these that's a little bit of overkill at least at this stage of the game uh, but you can definitely do it so i encourage you to do so if that is what you want um, but all in all, it looks really cool, doesn't it? And now we have pretty much all the power we're ever going to need on this planet. Uh, along with our solar panels, we should have over one terawatt worth of energy easily. Uh, we can always add a little bit more if we need to, but for now this should do. And that means that we are pretty much good to go and progress our science a little further. And that is what we'll be focusing on in the next episode. For now, I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope to catch you in the next one.